By the 9th of November, the wall in Belfast will have been up longer than the wall in Berlin was up. Anyone who's not from Belfast who comes here and looks at them is shocked and horrified because it's not normal to live like this. There's a sense that they've always been there. Uh, you know, you have a generation, a couple of generations have grown up and they've just been normal. You know, when they were born, these walls were already here. So even to ask the question, why are they here? Why are they still here? Do we want them? They don't know where, what to do with the peace walls. People have started making friends with each other through things like the internet and you don't know whether you can go, well, I'll go over here to that side and nothing will happen to me because I know they're my friends, but you don't know who's your friend. Time for peace. Peace in Connor's time. That's obviously a little child, that's what it's all about. We suffered as children and our children have suffered as children, but we don't need to pass that on to another generation of children. Walls aren't a recent phenomenon, they've been built all throughout the world and every country is building them at different levels for different reasons, but regardless of the context that the wall's been built, the, the result is the same, it's, it's a perception of safety. But yet nobody has, has, has looked at the, the processes or mechanisms for bringing down the barriers. That's where we are at the minute. But yet, so we continue to build these solutions because they're, they're seen as quick and they're seen as cheap and they're seen as visible. But yet nobody's looked at the long-term repercussions of actually beginning this, the processes of bringing them down.